OK, good morning, everybody. So can you hear me? Uh, this morning, we're going to talk about this statement, all 3D assets, any platform. And we're going to do that in the context of automated 3D productions and uh, a product called Simplygon. Uh, my name is Kushi, and this is my colleague, Sebastian. Good morning. We're going to talk about uh, why 3D, why we need to optimize 3D, how we optimize 3D, and then who uses these types of products. And then we're going to demo a version of the product for you. And then uh, no Q&A for today, but we will be over there if you guys want to come and answer questions. Uh, so let's start with why 3D. I mean, we don't use 3D anymore just because it's as cool as this game is. Uh, with 3D today is a very important tool, and we uh, use it in our daily lives. Uh, interactive 3D for us is a rich form of media compared to uh, music and, and uh, videos. This media is much closer to our reality. 3D allows us to interact and be much more immersive with the content. Uh, an example of this is this car configurator. Back in the days, we would have uh, used thousands of pictures to be able to show the different configurations and color schemes on a car like this. Uh, but we can do all of that and much, much more with just one 3D in uh, our computers. Another great example is uh, with the introduction of mixed reality, we also have a uh, scale. We can work from mock-up scale all the way to full scale. A good example is when an architect is working on a project uh, before building it to mitigate problems in scale and even furnishing that space to make good purchasing decisions before doing it live. Uh, why do we need to optimize 3D? Uh, so users are not cool with laggy applications. Um, and we need to help them get rid of those. And furthermore, if you're making something from mixed reality, just lagging a bit here and there can make our users physically sick. So it's very important for developers to try to uh, help developers with that, uh, users with that. So how do we achieve this? Uh, we can do this by uh, controlling the frame rates. So you should look at frame rates as a not target reach. Uh, frame rate is a set limit. So at the top of our projects, we need to decide on a target frame rate. Usually, a game is good with 30 to 60 FPS. But with uh, mixed reality devices, we need to maybe push that even higher, upwards of 120. And when we make that decision, then it's just a matter of how much content can we cram into that set frame rate. And that's when optimization becomes paramount. And furthermore, and finally, we need to optimize for multiple devices. Devices, graphic performance range from very small AR and mobile devices to hard hardware like PC and console that are powerful. We can bring the same content to all these devices if we do the optimization good. Sebastian is going to talk about how we optimize uh, for these contents. Hello. <laughs> so without any automatic optimization tools, optimization has to be done by hand. It's not easy. It isn't fun and it doesn't scale. In fact, in project, 3D projects without any optimi automatic optimization, upwards of 10% of the total project time will be spent doing manual optimizations. We believe that artists and developers should spend their time being creative and not doing manual, tedious labor. That's why we at Simplegon, our passion is to completely automate optimization. <clears throat> And we've been doing that, that over the last 10 years. We've been refining our algorithms, improving our integration, to make sure that Simplegon is the best product in the business. And we have been doing this in collaboration with the toughest customer in the 3D space, high-end game developers. So we have traditionally been used in games. Our idea is quite simple. You should be able to start out with any kind of asset. It could be a CAD asset created by an engineer, a DCC asset created by a 3D modeler, like a 3D modeling tool from Autodesk or similar, or a scanned asset created by anyone. Select your Simplicon settings and run the assets to Simplicon. So Simplicon can help you with a number of different things in your asset. We can reduce the number of triangles. 
it can lower the number of objects, reduce the number of textures or the size of the textures, as well as reduce file size and memory footprint. When your asset is optimized, you take the outputted asset and put it into the authoring tool of your choice. So this would typically be a real-time 3D engine. And if you want your application to support multiple target platforms, like perhaps you want to target mixed reality or mobile, just take the source asset and run it through Simplicon again with a settings file suitable for that platform. So you have a single source of truth asset, asset but can publish to multiple platforms. Any good result in a project comes from good iteration. And without any automatic tools, that is actually very hard to achieve. The reason being, your testers will test the application in the wrong environment. Because you can't afford the time to do manual optimization on your asset until you are sure that you have the final asset. So your testers, you, you might be making a mobile application, but your testers will have to test with a source asset on a strong PC. And that's not valuable feedback. With Simplicon, you use automatic optimization even in the development cycle. That means you have your source asset, you run it through Simplicon, optimize it, and the testers can test on the target platform, for example, on a HoloLens. You gather the feedback and then apply all the feedback on the single source asset. And it's automatically published to be ready to be tested again. Now I'm going to hand over to Koshi to talk about who uses Simplicon. Yeah, so who is the user of Simplicon? Nice shirt, by the way. Uh, awesome. Uh, so traditionally, game developers have been using Simplicon, and that for a long time. The game developers use Simplicon to automate their optimization processes, allowing them to make more bigger and impactful games. 80% of all AAA games today use Simplicon. Uh, it's a very powerful experience for an engineer to be able to review and iterate on a work in mix. We're soon back again. Here we go. So uh, iterate in mixed reality before uh, doing that product or building that product. So engineering and CAD data are traditionally created for production purposes. And they're never designed for visualization. In order to get those production assets into something we can visualize, we need to optimize. This is a very, very important area for optimization to be automatic. Um, a user can be a design student that has designed a shoe and wants to share it with her classmates in 3D. And in order to be able to run that smoothly um, on a visual um, view viewing experience, we need to optimize that. And a user can be anybody that has created or captured a 3D asset. Um, you, know, you, you guys can use Paint 3D today to uh, uh, mix and create 3D assets. You can use Microsoft Remix 3D today to publish that uh, to family, friends, and the world. Uh, so 3D is literally for everybody. Sebastian is going to demo a product for us now. OK, so we're going to talk a bit about Simplicon Labs. And that is a um, preview product. Um, and it's also a service. Um, you remember the shoe he spoke about, the designer shoe. So imagine this is that shoe, shoe.fbx. Uh, it has two million triangles. And a trained eye might see that it's actually quite dense in terms of triangles. It uses nine textures, a bit of overkill. But as a designer, you don't want to be thinking about number of textures and such. You just want to design and make the most pretty shoe you can. 88 megabytes, not too bad for a PC. But these stats doesn't really allow this asset to be visualized effectively on a HoloLens or a mobile device. It needs to be optimized. And I did that yesterday using Simplicon Labs. So this is Simplicon Labs, and it's a preview. Yeah. So it's a website you can go to and optimize in the cloud. So when you, when you go here, you log in with your Microsoft account and click on the Optimize tab. I know the text is a bit tiny, but bear with me. I click on the big circle there to upload an asset. Select my shoe here, and it's being uploaded to Simplicon Labs. Now I can 
first I can get some stats on the asset. It is a placeholder though, so there's not the correct stats. I select Web WebGL as my output platform and start processing in the cloud. If you want to have textures with your assets, you can take the model and the textures that belong to that model and zip them together in a zip file and send that zip file up. And when the processing is done, you will receive a zip file back down. And remember, this is a preview. So there's a quite limited amount of processing power running this right now. So it's for developers to try it out. If there's many people using it at the same time, you will be placed in a queue until it's your time to process. But it's scalable. So these platforms I showed, HoloLens, Mobile, WebGL, VR, Xbox, these settings, apart from custom, directly correlate to those Simplicon settings files I spoke about earlier. And these settings files has been created in such a way that it shouldn't really matter what kind of asset you put into it. The asset that Simplicon Lab sends back should be suitable for viewing on that platform. Custom is a bit different. But when you click it, you can select from a few different settings manually. Or those settings are actually what differs these different platforms from each other. So I selected WebGL, downloaded the asset. And of course, I want to show it in WebGL. So I uploaded it to Remix.3D, or Remix3D. So this is a video. It's not playing. There we go. So this is uh, running in a browser on WebGL. I can spin around, of course, and zoom in. And um, as you can tell, they look pretty good. They look very close, I would say, to the source asset. So it makes you wonder, what exactly did Simplicon even do to the asset? I have some stats on the next slide. So the source asset was 2 million. We took it down to 30,000 polygons. It went from nine textures to three textures. And we also reduced the file size and memory size a lot. The picture here tells the story. So I did it like this. On the left hand side is the before state. On the right hand side is the after state, the optimized version. In the upper row, they're very similar. That's how the asset really looks like. And they're supposed to be very, very close to each other. If you have a trained eye, you might tell some differences between them, but it's very close. In the bottom, though, it's a huge difference. So what we did is we overlaid the model with the wireframe of the model. And there's so many triangles in the unoptimized version that the whole shoe has gone black there from all the wireframe just intertwining on top of each other. While the optimized version has much less, less triangles while maintaining a really good looking shoe. A trained eye might be able to see also that the triangles have been reduced most effectively in the areas where they're most dense. So they are more uniformly spread out over the shoe in the optimized version. That's the intelligence of Simplicon. Of course, Simplicon Labs is not only a website. It's not it's nothing happening in the website itself. It's just a, it's the front end. The real magic happens in the REST API. And this REST API is actually available for all developers to use. In, Sim in the Simplicon Labs website, you can go to the API documentation tab and get a full documentation of the entire REST API. And being a REST API, this means that you're not only limited to using it from uh, a web service. You can integrate it into a C Sharp application on a PC, or a mobile application, or even a HoloLens application, where someone could have an asset, say, OK, it doesn't run smooth enough, call the REST API, and get an optimized model version directly back into the HoloLens. Available online also is a small example application I created. It's just a C Sharp application. It's a console application. It takes some uh, arguments to the executable, where you can send in either a folder of models or a single model, some settings. And it will upload the model and get the optimized version back. And it also shows how to authorize with the Microsoft Accounts API, MSAL. Because you have to use that and send the header to the service to be able to use the service. 
that's available online as well. OK, cool. Thank you, Sebastian. So uh, this URL will get you to SimpliCon Labs. And in there, you will find this uh, API for the optimization. And then we will be adding every cool little thing that our SimpliCon Studio will be cooking over the uh, coming years. Uh, apart from that, we're also super excited to announce that we will be releasing our full SDK and API for the first time, totally free for all developers. Uh, our team has named this product SimpliCon Connect, and you can find it on SimpliCon.com. Uh, and we're super excited for you guys to get uh, working on this and giving us uh, good feedback moving forward. Now, how are we on time? Do, can we take questions now? We're cool with that? Great. Yeah. So we'd love to take some questions if you have. Please. Yeah, so the SDK and API that you can get free simply on Connect, that's fully offline. Absolutely. There, there are two SKUs on our webpage you can find that can help you with that. Yep. And when this becomes a cloud solution moving forward, uh, we will be offering a, both the uh, Azure, that's a public, but, but also on-prem. So, so uh, for real scalability, you can use on-prem services for that. Yep. Uh, I can take that if you want to. Go ahead. So, so the cloud version is... Um, uh, limited, quite limited, and uh, that's kind of by design. It's meant to be an easy tool for creators to just use, get an optimized version that should run really good. But if you want to utilize the full power of SimpliGun, go, go and get the SDK, and, and there's much more to do, of course. I mean, it's a complex product. Please. So, so the processing speed really depends on what you're doing with it. If you're doing just a triangle reduction, that is very fast in seconds. And also, it depends on how big your model is. If you put in a full Boeing airplane, obviously, that's going to take some time to process. Uh, but moving forward, we are with, uh, that's one of the reasons with our cloud strategy is to be able to uh, push that uh, to several machines and get processing up as much as possible. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And there are scenarios where this could be done real time as well. But uh, that really depends on your content. Yes? So it works good with complex models. We've done a lot of uh, work in enterprise. Uh, it's a matter of, uh, uh, again, what, what you want to do with it. I mean, there are, there are scenarios that are, are uh, maybe hard to, to achieve if you really push it. Yes, we can't talk much about that right now. But if you follow us, we will be talking much more about how we're going to progress this into a fully automated pipeline that also can ingest the CAD data directly. Yep. For the SDK uh, uh, that you can download on, on your machine, there is no limit. Only the memory is the limit. But the cloud version. For the cloud mm -hmm. version, there is a limit. 100 megabytes. You can upload the FPX right away, but normally you would have textures, right? So make sure to have embedded textures in the FPX if you want to, otherwise you just, if you don't want like embedded textures, you can have the textures beside and zip them together. Yep. Yes. Uh, the online, so, so uh, uh, all, all process, the, the we support uh, animation yes. on the online? Yes. Yes, we do. And well, the cool thing with that is mm. that uh, we've made games for many, many years. It's extremely good at preserving your animation data. And uh, furthermore, you can optimize skeletal meshes as well if you can optimize the number of bones that are needed, for instance, in a lot chain. That is not available in the cloud version, okay. however, right now. Well, but yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. OK. Well, thank you, guys. Thank you.